Hi, uh, thanks for inviting me today. Uh, uh, apologies that I can't make it in person. Unfortunately, there's been a bit of a clash that we couldn't avoid, but uh, my name is Russell Rozak. I'm uh, the Director of Research and Innovation at NELFT, and I'm going to say just a couple of things really about the synergy really between QI and innovation and research more broadly. Um, so in the simplest sense, really, uh, QI is about what's possible and research and innovation is about what's scalable. So, um, you know, QI really is a great way to harvest um, the creativity of staff in the front line uh, to start thinking about ideas that you know, this tweak or that change can make a difference. Uh, and that's a really good starting point uh, that can eventually snowball into major innovations. So the way I see it, sometimes a QI is sort of like the seeds from which larger innovation eventually grows. Um, and I think that um, you know QR R and D has been around for a long time in Nelft, uh, it, you know, for, for for decades really. We've been a trust that punches very much above its weight in terms of um, managing very large research projects. At one point, we were, we were the sponsor site, uh, the kind of leading uh, trust in eight separate uh, national. Uh, multi-centre trials. So we were coordinating several trusts across the country, numerous trusts across the country in a whole range of different major studies. Uh, we're still doing that. We're still coordinating uh, uh, about a handful of major studies across the country at the moment. So uh, as I say, for a trust our size, we do a lot of sort of national level uh, research. Uh, and a lot of that starts uh, sometimes from QI projects on the ground. So, you know, an idea initially needs to be planted and then nurtured, maybe in a local team that maybe we can do something different here. Um, and then um, uh, starting to see what the outcomes of that are going through a PDSA cycle that might catch on. There might be more people who are interested uh, and then that might get into a larger scale um, uh, evaluation, you know, involving ethics and then uh, uh, and eventually grant applications. Um, so, you know, R&D is at the level of where you start to get grant applications uh, in order to um, uh, bring about a whole team of academics who can start to engage in um, you know, sort of data collection and and, uh, and sort of large scale evaluations. So on the one hand, you know, in many respects, um, QI is, is the thing from which uh, research and then innovations often grow. Once you get some research growing, you can also get some large scale innovations going. So um, whether it's driven by policy or driven by findings in QI or research, uh, we can also engage in some major service change, uh, which, for example, we're doing at the moment in the community mental health transformation. That comes from a lot of uh, sort of policy change, but some of it is informed by some QI findings that we've also had um, over the years as well. Um, and and so on the one hand, um, you know, the synergy works in terms of sort of QI then being followed by research and innovation. On the other hand, it can sometimes happen the other way around. So a very large scale research projects can also then lead to it's a bit the way I think about it is a bit like a when, when you see a whale in the ocean, you often have lots of small fish floating around it at the same time. You have a whole ecosystem around the whale that's in, uh, uh, swimming along. And we've noticed that with very large studies. So the ADESI trial, for example, which is the national trial into open dialogue that we're leading in NELFT, um, with six trusts across the country engaging in pilot teams. As a result of the, the very large scale nature of that, it's operational change as well as um, uh, uh, training staff to work differently and cultural change. Um, you know, as well as that very large trial, it's the largest model of mental health care trial in the world right now uh, that we're leading at NELFT. Um, uh, alongside that, people come along with ideas. Well, you know, what, what if what, should we look at that particular angle of it? What about um, if we did that tweak differently? How about how it affects this population? You know, different ideas come about, and as a result, we've got several PhDs, we've got numerous masters and QI projects all around that very large uh, research study. Um, so, so sometimes the very large studies can spawn smaller ideas that then come up that people can then engage in. And I've had staff who've been working in the different teams approaching me about, you know. Perhaps we can do a QI about this. Perhaps we can, uh, or somebody who's doing a master's had looked at the study and decided to come along and do their, um, uh, do their sort of a research evaluation based uh, on this study. So it's a, it's a fascinating synergy. The two absolutely all work together very well. And the ultimate aim is to improve care for patients, right? So we're all thinking about that and we're thinking about the different levels in which we can do that. Uh, and we're learning from each other's ideas. Sometimes small leads to big, sometimes big leads to small, uh, but it's all part of the same kind of uh, ecosystem of curiosity, really. You know, what could we do that improves things? What works better? Um, and so you know, we, we, we've been working increasingly closely together and that often happens at the level of ideas rather than necessarily sort of um, 
uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, leadership, etc., which we, which we of course do, particularly in innovations. But the most exciting stuff happens at the level of ideas when that comes through. So you know, you can always approach R and D, uh, the R and D department, um, uh, with ideas. If you'd like to take something to the next level, if you'd like to try to uh, explore um, how you can do an actual study in that. Um, you know, I, I remember I, one of the first pieces of research I did is when I worked on an inpatient ward in PICU. We started a mindfulness group for staff and patients, and we wanted to see actually if that makes a difference to um, um, to the use of PRN medication, to the use of, to the actual use of restraint, if this group is having an impact on that. Uh, and we did a little bit of a QI type evaluation of it, and then we thought, well, actually, this would be something really good to publish in, the, in a peer reviewed journal. So then we did some formal research around it, uh, uh, and we were able to publish it. Um, and then subsequently, the next stage for that kind of thing is to then get grant money to look at it on a sort of larger systems level, perhaps a multi center level. Um, so, you know, a, a number of people have gone through that process from small projects to big projects, and as I say, from big projects, morning, small projects too. So it's a fantastic space to work in. I find that, as you know, I'm a clinician first and foremost, I'm a consultant psychiatrist, and um, I find it makes work far more rewarding. Uh, you can start to think about how to change things and improve things for everybody, not just the patients you see. Um, and it, you know, it makes for a, a far more uh, exciting um, and um, uh, an engaged uh, working life. So I recommend it to anybody, uh, whichever part of the sort of spectrum or the family or the ecosystem you like to get involved in a QI research innovation, uh, please do. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, I hope uh, today goes really well. And uh, yeah, I look forward to continuing to work with uh, colleagues in QI and all sorts of staff across the trust who have ideas and projects that we can work on together uh, to hopefully build scale and ultimately, as I say, make things better for our patients. Thanks very much.